Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. It's Michael from EmbodyTheState.com, and I have a lot to catch you guys up on. I know it's been a while since I uploaded last, but don't worry, everything's back to normal. And I have a whole bunch of things that I've been working on that I'm going to be pushing out now. This video is going to be, by the way, it, it's a new series that I'm starting, and it's going to be, um, I'm going to have it on a playlist. And my purpose is for this playlist that I'm creating is to kind of give you guys a deeper understanding of the law. It's more so to help you guys apply the law other than just telling you guys, oh, you need to be doing this, this, and that, right? It's, it's not the best way to learn, and I like to teach the law thoroughly, right? So in this video, we're going to be breaking down one of my, I would say, top three, top five favorite lectures of all times from Neville Goddard, and it, it's, it's such a powerful lecture, and the lecture is called The Art of Dying, by the way, and I just, like, I know it sounds scary, but trust me, it's not, you, you'll get it, and it's, it's something that really, really kind of brought me back to the understanding of who I am, of what I'm capable of. It really helped to solve a lot of my fears and it really showed me early on just the mistake that most commonly people make, right? I see it all the time as a, as, as a person that teaches the law. You know, I, I see the same mistakes being repeated over and over and a lot of that can be pretty much fixed through knowledge, right? And, and this video is going to be for that, okay guys? It's for all of you guys. Um, whether you're new here or not, you know, this is going to benefit everyone. <clears throat> some of you may have read it or, 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 or know of it, and some of you may not. I believe a majority probably haven't even heard of it or even read it. So we're going to be diving into that today in this video. As for the other things to catch you guys up on, you know, uh, for my absence, don't worry. It, literally, remember in the last video, I told you guys that um, I'm single, but I met someone, and we're just seeing where it goes. Well, uh, <laughs> we saw where it went, and I'm officially um, a boyfriend now, I guess, or I'm in a relationship, and... Uh, I, it's, sorry, I'm just thinking of her and, and I'm just, I can't stop smiling because it's like, it's such a happy, loving relationship already and it's crazy. Like I've already felt in one month more than I felt in any time in my life in the past. It's, it's just so beautiful to know the law and uh, to kind of be able to experience these things knowing who we are and, you know, she's smart, she's beautiful, she understands the law and is able to teach it. I see her helping other people and it's, it's, it's so beautiful to see. And I, to, every day I'm like, I can't believe like I got like, <laughs> you know, it's like a, it's not in the sense of like lack of self-esteem, but it's like, it's more like I'm still in shock. I just, it's like, that's awesome. Like I just, I'm, I'm so in awe of her and I'm so proud of her. And, and sweetie, if you're watching this, which I know you, you, you will, I love you. And <laughs> I hope you enjoy this video too. And, and by the way, this is a lecture that her and I studied on our own in the past too. So um, it's, 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 it's really nice to share with you guys, right? And you know, I, I might even bring her on uh, in the future on a video and stuff like that. And, and I have to catch you guys up on so much more, but I've been spending a lot of time with her and, and just dealing with clients on the side. So when I'm not with her, I was doing client stuff only, right? And uh, I was preparing stuff that I want to release for content as well on the side. And I, ju I just really enjoyed the, the last four weeks that we had together and stuff like that. And, and you know what? It's time to get back to teaching everyone. So that being said, we're going to get into it. And by the way, I'm going to be reading it on my Kindle. And the text is like really small because it's a PDF. So um, if I make a mistake here and there, just bear with me. Um, you know, one thing I really want to say as well is anyone in the next 40, so after 48 hours from now, so not, not today, not tomorrow, whatever, it's, it's after 48 hours. Those of you still uh, waiting on a response for either voice message or email, if in 48 hours you don't have anything from me in the next 48 hours, feel free, please contact me, whether it's uh, through WhatsApp or through email, whichever package you have. And I'm going to get to you guys ASAP, okay, guys? I've been clearing the backlog still this whole time that I've been here. I've been, I've been just getting through clients daily. And um, I'm going to aim for the next two days. I'm going to just be strictly getting through the last little bit I have left, okay, guys? So I appreciate that. And feel free to just send me a message after 48 hours that you see this video, okay, guys? So that being said, let's dive into it. And the lecture is called The Art of Dying. And The Art of Dying, it might sound scary, but, but in truth, it's really... It, it just talks about, you know, letting your old self die. It's about dying to your old self. In other words, that's really what it is, right? So don't, don't let the, the word dying scare you, okay? So we're going to dive right into it. And I know you guys are going to love this one. And, and <laughs> I'm just smiling because I already know the first, like, two paragraphs. It, it leads you into such a good direction. So here we go. The art of dying. If you are with us for the first time, this is what we believe and teach here. We firmly believe that you, the individual, can realize your every dream. And the reason is that God and man are one. We believe that the difference is not in the mentality with which we operate, but only in the degrees of intensity of the operant power itself. And, and that we call human imagination. 
Keats said, you can take any one great and spiritual passage and it will serve as a starting point to lead you to the two and 30 palaces. Take this simple one in Paul's letters to Corinthians. I die daily. And, and that, that's one I love like all the time, right? Like when you hear I die daily, which, which it's going to get into it. Like, it's going to click with you what it means, right? And it's so beautiful. Um, or Blake's statement to his letter to the Crab Robinson. Death is the best thing in life. There is nothing in life like death. But people take such a long time in dying. At least their neighbors never see them rise from the grave. If you understood, Blake, you would not think of death as the world thinks of death, but you would see that no one can grow without outgrowing. But man is not willing to grow. Or sorry, man is not willing to outgrow. Yet he wants other things than those he has. But if you remain in one state, you will forever have to suffer the consequences of not being in another state. Guys, <laughs> it's right there. Like it's telling you in your face. It's all about letting the old you go. It's about detaching from your 3D, right? It's, it's about understanding that, you know, even though, yes, right now you're aware, okay, I don't have the things I want and I'm not the person, I'm not the man or the woman that I want to be, right? Nothing is stopping you from feeling that, that, you know, the opposite is true. Nothing is stopping you from shedding that old skin and just be like, no, this is who I am now. And just really accept that, okay, guys? That, that's what it's referring to. If I remain in the state of poverty, I must suffer the consequences of not being in the state of wealth. So I must learn the art of dying, Paul says. I die daily, Blake says. People take such a long time in dying. Man does not outgrow his state of ill health or his old job or his environment. We must learn the art of dying. And this week is the great death. And we are told that God dies that man may live. Okay, on to the next paragraph. Like that, I love, like I already love the way this is heading, guys. And and don't worry, this one isn't too long. It's about five pages, but the text is super small. So like, look at look at how small the text is, and and um, but it's like five big pages. So we're 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 almost done, like already. Um, we say that the imagination of God and man are one. No matter how far it goes, universes are created and sustained by the same power that sustains our environment. We say the power is the same, but we recognize a vast difference between the power that sustains the universe and that which sustains an environment. The difference is only in the degree of intensity of the center of imagining. So if we increase the intensity in the center of imagining, we will create greater and greater things. So I see my dream and I must learn to die to what I am in order to live what I want to be. Let me repeat that, guys. It says, so I see my dream and I must learn to die to what I am in order to live to what I want to be. Guys, like that, like so many, this is why I tell people, study the law. Like don't just watch YouTube and TikTok to get all your information, right? Because those are the ones that end up spending years and years asking questions and never moving, right? And, and it's not to say that you can't learn and you can't manifest if you study that way. It's just, it, it's not optimal. So why would you do things the harder way when you don't have to, right? And that's why I tell all my clients, I tell all my viewers, don't just take my word for it. Like, go study the law in the meantime as well, okay? Now it says, uh, okay, now this is the mystical meaning of a death in the Bible. The death of Moses, a story familiar to all of us. We are told that Moses comes out of the land of Moab and then scales the mountain of Nebo, goes to Pisgah, sees Gilead, or Gil Gilead, I, honestly, I, I'm, I'm ruining this, but, um, and, and finally, he looks into the promised land of Jericho. But the Lord tells him, I will let you see the land, but you cannot go into it. Then Moses dies. Uh, let's see the land, you can't go in. Then Moses dies. The present state cannot be carried into the new. It has to die as a consequence of the new made alive. But his eyes was not dim, and his natural force was not abated. And no one knows his burial place. First, remember that all the characters of the Bible take place in the mind of man. I am Moses, you are Moses. It means to lift up or to draw out of. We are told in the very beginning of the story that he was pulled from the, from the bulrushes. The word of Moses in Hebrew, spelled backwards in the ancient Hebrew, means the name or I am. So I am drawing out of my own being or the I am Moses comes from. This comes from two Hebrew words meaning, uh, sorry, they're talking about Moab. This comes from two Hebrew word meaning mother, father, or womb. Then he scales the amount of, ne sorry, the amount of Nebo, which means to prophecy, or which represent the subjective state I long for. I will prophesy for you, or you for another. 
you single out a person's longing. If he longs for something, it means that he does not have it. Else there could be no longing. Remember, guys, remember, if he longs for something, it means that he does not have it, right? So just remember, when you, when you catch yourself in that awareness of, I want this thing, I'm longing for it, I'm longing for my SP, I'm longing for money or whatever, right? It, it, it's, that's that little key right there that tells you, hey, wait a minute, that's, use that as a nudge. I tell people all the time, it's, think of it as like your higher self reminding you, hey, you wanting this thing is a reminder that you need to accept that you already have it. If you want results quick, that's what you have to do. That's how I view these little, these things that I long for, right? Because I know it's like the second I desire it, I already know the rules to the game. I just know that God doesn't beg and long. He just becomes, right? So I just become the one who has it. I can just accept it's done. I already have it, right? And the more I do that, that's, that's me dying daily. I chose to die to the old state that recognized I didn't have it, okay? Uh, else there could be no longing, but Moses climbs Nebo. That is, he participates in seeing the state longed for. I single out something that implies I am the man I want to be. I scale the mountain, then comes Pisgah, which means to contemplate. I contemplate what I want to be, and then he sees Jericho, which means a fragrant odor. I will contemplate the desired state until I get the feeling or reaction that satisfies. I have not only scaled Nebo, but I have reached Pigsa, or sorry, Pisgah, and looked into Jericho. I am filled with the emotions that implies the act is completed. Then there is uh, Gilead. I'm just going to call it Gilead or Gilead, <laughs> which means hills of witness. Then I, as Moses, die. I cannot go into the promised land and no one can find where I am buried. What does it mean? If I am poverty ridden and frightened, and then you meet me and see me as free as a bird and happy, then I am not the man you knew who was frightened. Then where is the other man buried? For Moses is the power in man, generic man, male or female, to draw out of himself anything in this world that he or she desires and to so enact the drama that he dies to what he was, that he may live to what he is enacting. That is Moses. And no one can know where he is buried. But we are told his eye was not dime nor his natural force abated. That is to say, when I die, that is when I enact the drama. I do not wait for signs to appear. It is when I am most aware of my restrictions and feel the pressures, then is when I must learn to die. I must learn to let go of what my senses dictate and, quote, go mad and yield to what is the only dream, to what is only a dream. But sustaining it and living in it, I die to what physically was real as I gradually lift up what was only the dream. You knew only the frightened man and not the other one. No one can tell where the other has gone. So this is how the art of dying is dramatized in the Bible as death of a man, but it has nothing to do with any certain man. For the story of the Bible takes place in the mind of every man. I will crucify myself for God crucified himself in me that I might live. But now I must nail myself upon the thing I desire and remaining faithful to it, lift it up as God nailed himself upon me, the present body, is believing himself a man called Neville, giving Neville the same power that is his but keyed low in the hope that I will lift up the power to bigger things in my world to which I can nail myself and so lift them up. There is no possibility of man making his dream alive unless he nails himself to this cross that is man. We are living because God nailed himself to us. Now man, keyed low, yielding to other states and not to what the senses dictate, become one with the state and nails himself to it, fixes himself in the state through emotion and feeling, and then he will be lifted up. For crucifixion comes before resurrection. Crucifixion without the resurrection would be unthinkable. It would be utter triumph of tyranny. If I could yield myself to my dream and it would not become flesh, it would be complete tyranny over this wonderful concept of life. But you cannot fail if you yield. If you hold back within yourself, wonder, what will I play as my last card if this doesn't work? Then you have not yielded. Like, that's so important. It's literally telling you, like, you have to, so many times, you'll even hear in, in Napoleon Hill talk about that little chapter where it's burning your ships, how the captain arrived on an island, they were outnumbered, and the captain ordered the, all the, the soldiers to who burned the ships because he knew, okay, if we have any chance of winning, we have to literally remove our only last resort, which is to escape, right, which is to flee. He knew that if there was the option was to live or to die, that their men were going to fight way harder, and they won that battle after they burned the ships. 
you know, it's, it's all about getting rid of the safety net. Of, because if you're already in the, in the state of consciousness of, oh, what if this doesn't work, right? Then guess what? You're not in the state of consciousness of having. So you're half in, half out, and then you're going to expect the results, but then you're going to complain, whether it's to a coach, whether it's to a YouTube video or a TikTok, you'll leave a comment, and then you'll be like, why not? But you're not taking credit for the half out that you weren't in there, right? So just remember that. It's food for thought, okay? Uh, let me, sorry, let me just catch uh, where I was for the crucifixion. Okay, perfect. It would be tiring over this concept of life, but you cannot fail if you yield. If you hold back yourself, wonder, okay, well, please, when will it break? Okay, then you have not yielded. You have not nailed yourself to it. It is a complete yielding. It is the great cry, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? If you know that you're God doing it, you can yield but there must be complete abandonment as though it were true and then you make it a reality. The cost is that form of mental abandonment uh, that Blake calls madness. But man is afraid. He dared not so abandon himself to a dream and so he never dies. So Blake was right when he said, there is nothing like death. The best thing in life is death. All right? And, and that, that, that's, that's why I love this lecture because it keeps telling you, it pounds it into your head that, hey, you have to die to your old self and give birth and give life to the new state that you want to experience in life. Does it make sense that if, if you've been manifesting an SP for months and months and months and months and months and, and years, whatever it may be, right? No movement, nothing happening. Does it make sense to continue doing what you're doing if you know for a fact when you look back and reflect that, hey, wait a minute, I'm not really dying daily. I'm not really walking in that conviction and returning to it, right? Which Neville talks about in chapter 22 of The Power of Awareness, right? He literally says it's not about holding a feeling, it's about returning to the state, which then makes it a habit, which then makes it who you are, which then reflects, right? This is what dying daily is. You're, re you're leaving that state and you're choosing to live in another one. You return to the other state and you're making it a habit. That's why it's so important that if you guys, you know, continue to look at, you with, at everything with your senses, and then you continue reacting, guess what's gonna happen, guys? You're gonna keep manifesting the same life with no changes because you're trusting what your eyes see more than what, you're, what you see in your inner world, guys. And you have to literally live as if your inner world is the only reality that you trust, knowing that what's in here gets pushed out in here, guys, okay? Uh, okay, on to the next page. We're almost done, we're 60% done, <laughs> okay. Um, many people only, let me see it here, one second. Many people only age but never change inwardly. They only mature physically, but they have not died in the mystical sense. There is no transforming power in the physical death, and they will still be anchored in a larger world with all the trends of this world. To our senses, they seem to be dead, but they will still, on another plane, have to learn the art of dying. And I can anywhere so detach myself from what is taking place that I can die. Perfect, that I can die. Sorry about that, I, I thought someone was at my door. Uh, die to that state. So every little death is the lifting of the divine image. This means dying as the mystic means it, it means dying mystically. It, die, it means dying mentally. Man dies to ill health or poverty or to disharmony, but he does it by yielding to other states. Blake looks on all states as permanent, as in his great poem regarding the halls of loss, I curse the earth for man and made it permanent. So states remain and man passes through states as those cities. If I do not pass through some state, but I remain in it, I think it is the only reality. Like if you're thinking it's the only reality, you cannot conceive of a state that is not. For the whole is finished, but man is awakening only by dying to state after state. Remember guys, keep returning to your states. Keep dying to your states, one after the other, guys, okay? It, it, that's why Neville preaches to return to a state. He preaches to, to kind of, um, I guess the, the best way to explain it is, you know, like, like I was mentioning, it, it's when you're thinking of your desire, don't live in that thinking of it. Don't live in that, oh, I wish I had it. Oh, I'm aware this isn't my reality. It's okay. It, you don't have to delude yourself into thinking that, you know, you, you have something that, 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 that you really physically don't. It's about feeling like you have something. It's about accepting that you have something when you know that your senses aren't showing you it. Okay, guys? So just, just make sure that you remember, you know, when, when, when you have any desire, you need to catch your mental awareness on that and go straight to the end. Die to the old you that just realized, hey, I want this thing, and become the version that has it, okay? You take a friend who is not well or cannot set himself free from some state, 
you represent that friend to yourself as he would be seen by the whole world. And to the degree that you are faithful to that representation, to that degree, you will bring him out of the old state. I love that because that is exactly what I shared with you guys uh, last summer when, I, when my brother tried to, um, you know, uh, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say the word, but uh, unalive himself, um, you know, through, through um, you know, he's going through some mental stuff and depression and alcoholism, all this stuff. And I knew that it was life or death for me. It was either, okay, am I going to let him suffer and not heal him? Or am I going to, to do the opposite, right? And I knew that I didn't want to lose my older brother, right? So I had to, it took me 10 days, but for 10 days straight, even when I had to see him and he was a bit angry from getting off the alcohol and stuff like that and grumpy, I had every reason to be upset and just go back to being human and be like, oh, he's such an idiot and da-da-da. I didn't do that. I understood. It was me holding him in that state because for half my life, I saw him like that. So he was just trying to escape. I understood that just as this little paragraph is saying that even though my senses were showing me that he's not thriving, if I view him as thriving and healthy and healed, he has to become that because I know the law works, right? And it took 10 days, right? And on day 10, everything changed. I, he stopped, you know, he, he, he cold turkey not drinking, right? He's, um, he started getting job offers, started thriving, started be, being happier. You know, he started being more, um, more excited for life with him and his daughter and things like that. And that was all because I changed how I viewed him because how I viewed him in the past was keeping him there. But I blessed him and I gave him health and life because I realized, holy crap, like I should have been, I should have made these changes a long time ago. And that was my mistake, right? And, and as a teacher, I have to be able to admit my own mistakes because at the same time, I'm human as well, right? I'm not perfect, right? But I'm able to understand when I make mistakes what I need to do ASAP, right? So just remember that that plays a role with exactly what happened with my brother. And the same thing applies. You can help other people, your family, your friends, your loved one. It doesn't matter, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter if, if it does, it doesn't matter if he knows you did it or not. He doesn't know I did it, by the way, unless he watches this, um, <laughs> did it or not. He does not have to know, but remain faithful. Sorry, there's a random fly around here, but remain faithful, uh, and you will bring him out of the old state and into the new state that you are seeing. All things are burnt up when we cease to behold them. Moses could see the promised land, but he could not go into it. If I am true to the likeness of what I behold, then I, the old man, cannot go into the new state. Something called the power goes into it, but no one recognizes it, for they cannot recognize, um, for they cannot recognize the transformed being. We, uh, sorry about that. It's, this thing is so, it's, it's worded so weird. I, I probably should edit that. We all feel so insecure in recurrence. If we know that a thing is fixed and that next week's things will be as they are today, I feel secure in that reoccurrence. I can have done something that violates the moral codes. I can have come from the wrong side of the tracks, but I cannot accept that for I am used to it. But to say that something awakes in me and become what it will, that is frightening to man. <clears throat> so we are told to awake out of sleep for recurrence brings security to the whole vast world. One does what he does as if he did it in a nightmare for God had to forget he was God to become man. Remember, we had to forget that we're God to be here, right? And, and, and Seth talks about this too, how Seth mentions that we all have to agree that we're going to forget of our powers. And this is the game of life. Even Florence Scovel Shin talks about this. We had to agree that we're going to forget that we're God and we have to start life on hard mode. Seth goes into detail to say that a lot of entities, in other words, souls, actually respect people that come to earth because earth is one of the hardest uh, you know, training grounds to go to. And a lot of more mature and experienced souls go to it because it's a challenge, guys. So keep in mind, we are in the one of the hardest modes of life possible. And we have to forget that we're God, but that's what I'm here for. That's what any teacher is here for, is to remind you all, guys, okay? Uh, let me just find where it was. Uh, when does it nightmare? Got to forget. Okay. Do you know to himself to make me alive? Because man, and willing down to this level is the very limit of contraction. But then comes the awakening from that deep dream into which he threw himself into make me alive. So this lifting up power goes about setting men free. For God became every man that every man may in time awaken as God. You guys are now awakening as God. When you watch my content, and, and especially if you're new and you're, you're trying to make this click, I'm helping you awaken as God. That's, that's, that's what my job is, okay? And, and that's the beautiful part, right? It, it's when you awaken as God, you kind of realize like, oh my God, I have nothing to fear. I shouldn't be anxious. I, yes, I have to go through the nuisance of my 3D not changing, but it's okay because it's going to start changing now. Like, it's just a little time delay and that's it. <laughs> okay. 
uh, awaken as God. Eventually, the whole world will awaken and the poem will be in full bloom and it will be noble beyond our wildest dreams. And then it will exist for us and we will be one with the creator of the great poem. That is the art of dying. Next Sunday is the great drama. I am riding a beast and I am the crossroads. Bring me a colt on which no man ever sat that is tied by the road where two ways meet. Here is a state I have never ridden before. It is so unnatural to feel myself to be the man I want to, I want to be and to actually get into the state and ride it without being thrown by every reason, which tells me I am made. But if you know that the Lord is your imagination, you can ride into Jerusalem. We are told we will find the animal at a crossroads where two roads meet. We are always at a crossroads of what I am and what I want to be. So I can ride the beast when I find the crossroads and ride it into Jerusalem. Then I am going towards heaven, but it is not continuous on my line of motion. Remember how I always tell you guys, it's so funny. Like it's, uh, this is probably like in the back of my head from my early studies, but like I always use the example of a crossroads and it's so funny to like see it here in, in one of my favorite lectures. So uh, it's crazy how like things come back to you that you forget. But I always share the example of a crossroads. I tell people you're in the fork. Specifically, I say fork in the road. You are literally in a fork in the road. And you have to choose. Go left, which is continue identifying with your present reality. Or go right, which is, yeah, I see my present reality. But I'm still going to decide to feel like I have something. I'm still going to assume and with conviction that I have something. That I, I know isn't here, but I have it within myself. And because the kingdom of heaven is within me, I know that it has to be reflected out of me. Because I am the projector of my life, okay? Uh, it is adjacent to where I am for heaven is a state of consciousness. I try to catch the feeling that would be mine if I were the man I want to be, but that involves a death. I must abandon myself to my dreams as if it were true and living in it. I lift up and make it real. Everyone must pass through this state for there is only one true religion in the world. Religion like charity begins at home with one's self. The mother seed of all religious beliefs lies in the mythical, sorry, the mystical experiences of the individual. All ceremonies are but secondary growths superimposed upon it. Religion means to be tied or devoted to. But if I'm not in love with what I am tied to, I must yield to something more lovely and make it real. I must bear my cross. I go so far and then I want to cross to the other line where my heaven is. For everything is interrelated. We all interpret, sorry, we all interpenetrate interpenetrate, sorry, interpenetrate, the word's so small, we all interpenetrate each other, we're all one, so there is an interpenetration of the whole world, and then comes conflict, and from what comes the solution of the conflict, for we must conflict if we are all interpenetrated, but then we must bring about reconciliation, whatever the solution is, that is within it the seeds of the new conflict, every heaven becomes in time hell, a thing is ours for a moment, but as we continue in it, it will bring about conflict. As long as there is inter interpenetration, there is always conflict. So I live in any desired state, and then as conflict arises, resolve it and die to it, and then move into another state. Thus we grow and outgrow. Thus man awakes. And that's what I talk about, guys. It's just live your life and continue to monitor your thoughts around the things you care about. And if anything pops up, don't panic and spiral and be like, why is this happening? Why did I do this? That it, like, forget about it. The past is the past. Move forward. Understand, hey, okay, I now got to be conscious of the things around that topic. And then I'm going to die every day. I die daily to the thing I want, the solution, right? So just remember that, okay? No man can be born in one environment and ever realize another if he does not yield to the state desired. So Blake was right. The best thing in life is death, but it takes man so long to die that his friends never see him rise from the grave. Can you not see then how it is with your friends who will always tell you the same things? Even though you have not seen him in 10 years, everything is still reoccurring. Nothing is new, but that makes him feel secure. Man does not want to change. It frightens him. I tell you that your imagination is God. Believe it. Exercise it. It is keyed low, but if you lift it up, you intensify it, and then vision after vision will be yours as you begin to awake. Do not think you are greedy because you are demanding things or the changing of things. You are here to create as your father creates. Want what you want and yield to it and create it. Then you will want higher and higher things. But nothing blesses a man unless it comes down from its heavenly state and takes on flesh. You are the only one who can clothe it in reality, but it remains a state unless you yield to it. This drama in the Bible is all about you. For the Christ Jesus of the Gospels is your own wonderful imagination. There is only an infinite God and the creation he loved. 
And he so loved it, he wanted to make it alive and share it and even change it. So God became man that man may become God. That is the great story of the Gospels. Every mystic in the world tells the same story. Then every man is free. There is no judgment. For no matter what man has done, it is God's doing it in a nightmare. There is only a complete forgiveness of sin, no judgment, and no argument. But man can change facts. The past can be unmade, so a man has done this or that. Use your strange imagination and turn the great wheel backwards until Troy unburns. It means to revise. And we're on the last, last little page here. I know a lady who burned herself and then unburned it. She poured boiling water on her hand. She lay on the couch and tried to, and tried to unto mentally. That's so weird. And tried to unto mentally, the way they worded it, um, what had been done. It was difficult because of the pain she kept trying. Uh, she redid the scene and poured the boiling water on the, on the tea and brewed it. And then she drank the tea. She did, she did it over and over. And finally, in the act of thus making the tea, she fell asleep. When she awoke some hours later, there was no trace of the burn. She wrote, you would have thought I should go right to the hospital, but now there is not even a sign of the burn. Uh, the past and the present are one in a greater moment. Now let us go into the silence. Woo, oh man, that's one of my favorite. I'm going to post that link to the actual lecture in the description for you guys so you guys can read it. Um, you know, it it's, it's definitely take a, take a time and, and read it and take notes and highlight things uh, when you read it on your own. I just wanted to say thank you, everyone, for all the support. Thank you, everyone, for all the love. I'm excited for all the content I'm going to be dropping this week and in the coming weeks and months. And I'm excited to introduce you guys to my girlfriend and stuff like that. So you'll, we'll see each other. Uh, like, like you'll see us, um, you know, doing stuff together. This summer, we're going to be going to Europe together, and, and we'll document that. And we might even have a little cute law talk. So I might even do a series with her, and, and we literally sit down, and we really discuss the law and break down things together. I, I think you guys uh, could benefit from that greatly, and it's, it's, it's a good excuse for me to spend more time with her. <laughs> so um, I, I just want to say thank you, everyone, for all the love and the support. And if, if you guys need me, you know where to reach me. I will be dropping more content soon, so stay tuned. Don't worry about it. And I just want to say thank you very much. I love you all very much. And I will see you guys next time, okay?